what is this wedge collection? Right. Well, I started collecting contemporary art back in 1997. I just started my dental office in downtown Toronto around 1992. So, you know, I got serious about art because it really moved me in a way that nothing else really did. I think when I was a 10-year-old kid growing up in Windsor, Ontario, mm -hmm. my parents took me to the Art Gallery of Windsor, to the Detroit Institute of Arts and so forth. And it really was an image uh, by the Harlem Renaissance photographer James Van Der Zee that was burned in my brain, a, a, a photograph entitled Couple in Raccoon Coats. And it was 1930s, the Harlem Renaissance, beautifully dressed couple in their Cadillac with the white wall tires. You know, it was very aspirational for a young kid and uh, it was started me on a journey about uh, my own culture. That was a spark. It was. When you pick a photograph, is it that it spoke to you? Like, what do you do when you choose all these incredible images? How do you choose these incredible images? Right, that's a great question. I, I actually have a collection that has sort of built on itself. Mm -hmm. um, there are some themes, if you think about it in my collection, like music mm -hmm. or fashion, um, the beauty of ordinary black life. You know, it's, it's a kind of a various tropes that come together to make this collection, but really, uh, the lens through which we're kind of viewing the collection for this exhibition is through the lens of community, identity, and power. As We Rise is the title of the collection. What's the story behind that title? Yeah, my late father, Spurgeon Montague, who was a teacher in Windsor, he always had this phrase that became a family motto, uh, lifting as we rise. As we do well, we should pull up others in our own community. And I think the people at the Aperture Foundation that uh, put out the book and are organizing this exhibition felt that that was an apt uh, title that kind of reflects my ethos about collecting art. You know, a lot of people in the black community say the images of us in the media are too stereotypical. Right. The images in here are not stereotypical no. at all. They're just life. Yes. You know, universal. Yes. yes, how we live it. I mean, the idea is the multiplicity, the many different ways of being black. I think so many times, as you know, in the media, it's always a depiction about oppression, uh, acts of violence. I'm, I'm here to sort of not act as a corrective, but just to offer something else to say, you know, we're, we're rising. And, and the, I see such diversity in the diaspora in these pictures. So when you're talking about black, you're not talking about North America, you're talking about Africa, you're talking about the world. Yes, it's a great point. Uh, you'll see images of an Eritrean family arriving to Saskatoon. Uh, you'll see images of Jamaicans that have come up to Canada. You'll see images of uh, folks that went from West Africa to the UK. It's very diasporic. It's uh, this idea that the Atlantic is kind of the periphery and that these artistic practices that we're showing are mostly artists that are from those regions. And thinking about the legacy of slavery, of course, Africa, the Caribbean, America, Canada, the UK, those are the sort of borders. So that's why this subtitle is As We Rise, you know, these photographs from the Black Atlantic. What exactly is happening here? Oh, these beautiful works on silk are by Ayanna Jackson, who is an artist who's based in South Africa and, and lives in America as well. She's really thinking about uh, the legacy of slavery and thinking about um, a young woman who was brought from, uh, stolen really from her home in Nigeria, brought to uh, England to be in the court of Queen Victoria. And she was sort of exoticized and everybody dressed her up. But just, she's taking on the persona of this young uh, queen herself. So the artist is like a self-portrait, but also thinking very much about black identity and how we might want to position ourselves and be seen. She now has agency as the subject of her photograph. This one here I find interesting because I feel like I've seen something similar at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And you have, Dwight. This is a work by the African-American artist Kehinde Wiley, who's celebrated yes. for, yeah, he did the portraits of Obama, uh, that, that yeah. portrait that's in the National Portrait Gallery. You know, his, his artistic practice is all about kind of um, taking pictures of people now in the black community and then asking the subject, hey, would you like to pose like this? And he'll carry a book around of classic Western art. So, you oh, know, in, in this case, it's- so that's the pose. Yeah, yeah. it's actually a doctor who delivered a baby and he's holding it like this from a, 
uh, you know, portrait from many years ago, a European portrait. So he's kind of uh, reinscribing it, reimagining you know, with uh, young black uh, men. He, he asked this gentleman to pose for him in the Fulton Street Mall in Brooklyn. So. Out of all of them, I, I find this one to be one of the most powerful photographs in the exhibit. The work is by a young South African artist named Jody Brand. It's a photograph that's been enlarged and printed on textile. So it's actually hung like a curtain. And uh, that gives it a certain amount of sort of motion and freedom, which is sort of reflected also in the, the image itself of uh, one of her friends in front of a garden, a beautiful home in South Africa, but wow. sort of subverting that idea of the kind of African <laughs> obelisk, right? you know, it's sort right. of doing their own thing. Yeah. I think it's really a, a powerful image. Really powerful. Yeah. What do you hope people get from, from viewing these photographs, maybe here in the gallery at the UFT or, or in the coffee table accompanying book? I, I hope that people will see a reflection of themselves. I hope that they'll see their own families. I think it doesn't matter so much that my family came from Jamaica and you'll see an image of Jamaican Canadians. It's, you know, I think an important show because all of us can say, that looks like an image of my auntie back in the 1970s, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing that- and you don't have to have pigment in your skin to see that. Everybody <laughs> in here could see family in these photos, yeah. no matter what community you're from. Thank you for this incredible collection, Dr. Montague. And most importantly, thank you for sharing it. Thank you so much, Dwight. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother.